Okay, so in the beginning, there was this way of counting that I developed to try to keep track of Meshuggah's patterns. Fast forward like 10 years, and the first paper I wrote in grad school tried to formalize this way of counting through an analysis of the demon's name is surveillance. Fast forward another two years, and I talked about it with a bunch more examples in that one YouTube video that has like a billion more views than any of my others. And I also made a video just about the demon's name is surveillance explaining this technique. I called it Meshuggah counting and found out that I was not alone and that metalheads use this technique all the time. And finally, fast forward another three years, happy recent third birthday to this channel, by the way, to the present. And I'm about to give a paper at the big Society for Music Theory conference in Denver, further formalizing this idea. I'm making this video for the same reason I make a lot of my videos, which is to work through some ideas and examples for a formal academic project. So yeah, I'm gonna give this technique a bit of a facelift and do some conceptual weed whacking using an example from the last riff of the maybe underrated but brilliant EP by one of my favorite, slightly less well-known Meshuggah adjacent bands, which is this EP eight by Uneven Structure. So the first aspect of the facelift for this concept is that I'm not calling it Meshuggah counting anymore. Obviously this technique works for a lot of bands, not just Meshuggah. I've cycled through a few other options and I think I'm going to stick with calling it cluster counting because what you really end up counting is clusters of attacks and that's the only thing that stays the same in every example I've used it for. In this example there are two types of attacks, the low chugs and the higher bent notes. The number of higher notes keeps changing. What we count is how many of those we get in a row before a chug. This gives us the pattern 2, 3, 2, 6, 2, 4, 2, 4, which cycles through twice with the very last four being truncated to a two so that it fits into the hidden eight measure hypermeter. Peasy. Cluster counting like this is cool because it gives us a minimal visual representation of the pattern. I think it's pretty easy to follow. I argue that it does this for two reasons. One is that while we're getting a cluster of attacks, it's easy to tell where the next one is or when the next one is. If we hear two evenly spaced attacks, we're primed to hear another one after the same amount of time to you know just keep the steady pattern, steady beat going. We know how to count along to the clusters because we're just doing that. We're just keeping the beat going. The other half of it is that it's easy to group things according to changes in pitch or changes in length. In this example is the difference between the low chug and then the higher note an octave up that marks the end of each string of numbers. So it's, you know, it's a change of pitch and kind of a change of, of timbre. But in other examples, it might be a longer pause or it might be some other change that will do the same thing, help make the, the boundaries clear. Either way, these boundaries tell us clearly where to stop counting and when to start again. And then the cluster counting scheme tells us how much to count to, how high to count each time. Cluster counting is also nice in a lot of cases because it doesn't say anything about meter or even tactus. We don't have to care what the time signature is or even what we feel is the beat in order for it to work. That comes in useful in a lot of metal where you know it's annoying to have to decide if you're transcribing something, you know, what time signature it's in, or where the, the tactus is ambiguous. And it, it's very helpful in this, in the first portion of this riff, where the drums are doing this dotted eighth symbol thing overlaid against the, the pattern that makes the groove very cool, but also confusing because it obscures the quarter note pulse. And that quarter note pulse kind of governs the pattern and the hypermeter. <laughs> follow the guitar attacks though we just need to tune out the symbol and stick to our cluster counting and everything will be just fine. <laughs> 
Cluster counting is different from two other common ways of counting, which are called additive and divisive counting. In additive counting, we assign numbers that account for every single subdivision in the music. So for this pattern, if we were counting eighth notes, we would label this as 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 7 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5. In this example, you're right. It just means adding one eighth note to everything. So the difference between cluster counting and additive counting isn't necessarily super clear. And that's because here, the, the length of the gaps between the clusters stays constant. But this doesn't have to be true. And in the full paper, I look at several examples where this is not true. The other common way of counting is divisive counting, which means hearing everything in relation to a larger beat. This becomes useful in the second half of this riff, where the guitar attacks stay the same, but they leave out all of the high attacks. We could count this additively. Or Or we could feel it as odd accents against a steady pulse in four. Cluster counting doesn't work for every type of riff, and it's taken me a lot of years of thinking about it to feel like I've maybe figured out a way of specifying when it does work and when it doesn't. Basically, I think it will only work if the attacks within a cluster are isochronous, so evenly spaced, and if the gaps between these clusters are well defined. This was true for the first version of this riff, and it was made even more useful there because of the confusing pulse situation. But it was not true in the second half. So I like cluster counting wouldn't work for the, the second half when they get rid of the high attacks. And so I switched to divisive. So I'm hearing, you know, the bigger beat, the bong, 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 bong. So if it wasn't clear, cluster counting isn't a magic bullet that always works. I'm just saying it simplifies a very common type of riff in metal where these things are true and the patterns are complicated enough that you need to use numbers to, to keep track of them. One final note. The first song on the EP is called Dianoia, 
which in Platonic philosophy refers to the mathematical counting type of knowledge. Seems appropriate for this video and this song, this riff. The final eighth song and the whole EP are called Eight, which also seems appropriate. There are kind of eight terms in this pattern, which then repeats twice. So the two, three, two, six, two, four, two, four. Uh, and then it's also fit within eight measures of four, four. And the, this pattern kind of dances against the, the, those eight measures of four because each term of the pattern is a different length and it you know, gets ahead and behind. There's also a bunch of ways you can make eights doing arithmetic with a cluster counting pattern, but that, that feels a little bit like a stretch. Let me know if you've got any other good eight interpretations in the comments and remember to be cool about fire safety. See ya.